Welcome to the Starter Girls Podcast, your ultimate source of inspiration and empowerment. We're here to help women succeed in every area of their lives, career, money, relationships, and health and well-being. While celebrating the remarkable journeys of individuals from all walks of life who've achieved amazing things. Whether you're looking to supercharge your career, build financial independence, nurture meaningful relationships, or enhance your overall well-being, the Starter Girls Podcast is here to guide you. Join us as we explore the journeys of those who dare to dream big and achieve greatness. I'm your host, Jennifer Loading, and welcome to this episode. All right, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Starter Girls podcast. I'm so excited about my guest today. After a successful career in the financial services industry, she and her husband took their expertise and personal experiences to a new level by helping others survive and thrive other narcissist after excuse me survive and thrive after narcissistic abuse jennifer can't talk today in just one year they amassed over 275,000 social media followers their their live events now average over 20,000 views and they have guided thousands from victimhood to empowerment through their master class their ebook their online courses webinars and one-on-one coaching And their podcasting journey, of course, began with these impactful live events showcasing their engaging and supportive interaction with their audience. And so I am so excited to chat. We get to chat with one of the two in that couple today. Super excited about it. But before we do that, we need to do a quick shout out to our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Walt Mills Productions. Need to add excitement to your YouTube videos or some expert hands for editing? Look no further. Walt Mills is the solution you've been searching for. Walt is not only your go-to guy for spicing up content, he's the force behind a thriving film production company with numerous titles in the pipeline. Always on the lookout for raw talent, Walt is eager to collaborate on film and internet productions. With a background deeply rooted in entertainment and promotion, Walt Mills leverages years of skills to give you the spotlight you deserve. Want to learn more about Walt and his work? Head on over to waltmillsproductions.net and let your content shine. All right. And with that, we are going to welcome our guest to the show. So please help me welcome Melissa Reimer to the show. She, alongside with her husband, are courageous survivors of narcissistic abuse. Together, they endured years of mental, physical, and financial torment from dangerous narcissists. Drawing on their financial industry expertise, they managed to protect themselves from complete financial ruin and rebuild their lives. Now they're dedicated to offering the same steps and guidance that they used through their journey to help others reclaim their freedom, independence, and self-confidence. Through their programs, Melissa and her husband transform passive victims into proactive warriors, empowering them to regain control of their lives and rediscover self-love and happiness. So Melissa, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm glad to be here. I think I was too excited about your bio. I just couldn't get all those words out. There was like so much stuff going on in there that... (laughs) <laughs> I like it. I like the whole warrior thing too. I think I think yeah. it's awesome. It's, it speaks volumes. I think. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit. Let's talk about what you guys are doing. I want to start there, like what you're doing, and then maybe kind of backpedal us a bit. What led us to this point? Okay. All right. Um, like you said, uh, John and I uh, met, you know, uh, through a mutual friend. Fortunately. Uh, years after we had recovered from the abuse each of us had suffered. Um, And we were both in the financial industry. So I was offered an early retirement. I grabbed it and we, I talked him into retiring and we didn't know what to do with the rest of our lives. I mean, we wanted to give back. We knew how difficult it was going through what we went through alone, isolated. People did not know what narcissism was back then. It's, it's come to the forefront now, and it is a global epidemic. I mean, over 2 million people a month search narcissism, narcissistic abuse, just trying to figure out what this is. So it affects so many people. And when we started thinking about it, um, we knew we had to come up with something that would be a guided a program to help others that are going through this since it is a global epidemic recover, get their lives back. So we help people not only leave, but we help them fight through legal battles because, you know, narcissists lie and they will lie about custody. They'll lie about child support. They'll lie about assets, all of that. And then we also help people who have already, 
left their abusers and are just struggling to move past because they feel so stuck because of the trauma and all of the emotional turmoil and all the triggers that your brain puts you through when you go through this type of abuse. So that's, that's kind of what led us to start an online course. And then we realized most people that are suffering this type of abuse don't have the, um, literally don't have the wherewithal momentum and the physical courage to do an online course by themselves. I mean, that's basically maybe down the road, but we knew we needed more hands-on. And so that's why we started branching into other things, uh, creating a, a financial series for those who are financially abused, which are most of them, and also one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is why we became certified coaches. So um, it, it takes somebody that understands it to talk to somebody that's going through it so they know there's hope and they know they can not only survive, but they can thrive on the other side of it. Yeah. And, and you and then what's interesting, too, about your journey, yours and your husband's, because you all you'll do this together. So I want to collectively put you together. But you having come through that and I think, you know, our, our journeys are very different, but I think you know, I had this, let me back this up. I had a conversation with somebody yesterday and I was talking about how the work that I do is really a byproduct of the things that I've gone through and how I embody my life now. So there's really no separation from what has happened and what is currently going on with the type of work that I do, right? Because it really, I feel like it's almost like a divine thing. Like I need to be doing this particular thing because everything that has happened has led me up to this point. So I feel like you guys are kind of in a similar position oh, yeah. that you are coming from a place of you had these traumatic experiences and you're being led and called that this is your journey. We don't want to say that, hey, you had to go through this. That's a good thing. But there is some good mm -hmm. that came out of this devastating thing that is now allowing you to share your expertise and your knowledge and all of that and put that into a positive and and fulfilling life for you, but also for the people that are getting to come into your space and, and learn from that. Absolutely. And, and you're right about that, you know, cause when I was going through it, it was so devastating that I, I would pray and just say, why, why am I going through this? What did I do to deserve this? And it took me years to figure out why I went through it, but this is why. This is absolutely what led me to this. Just like you said, it's when I started thinking about my life before I met the abuser during that horrific time and my struggles after, it really took a toll on me. So if you can shorten that recovery time by knowing what to do, the steps, um, believe me, we made many, many mistakes when we were going through it. It's almost like I was always one step behind my abuser and then recovering from what he did. Um, we were able to put that down. I documented it in, in my journal. I mean, I had to because of the gaslighting. I thought I was losing my mind. Most people go through that exact same thing. So I started journaling. So going back through those journals have been really triggering for me, but it also was a way for me to go, you know what, if I would have known this, I could have done this beforehand. That is how we created this course. It's taking the step back. So instead of always being one step behind, you're in front of your narcissist and you're, you're almost able to expect what they will do or what they won't do to protect yourself. So narrowing that awful journey for people is, is definitely fulfilling. I mean, it, it's what, you know, keeps us going every day. Yeah. And I imagine too, listening to you, you gave me chills in the very beginning because I can feel your passion in it. And I always know when people are like, it, it hits me when I know people are kind of in their space because then I get the chills listening to it. I'm like, yeah, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. That's it right there. Um, I think, you know, going through this, you probably had to do a lot of as recovery for yourself too. And I don't want to get off on all of this, but I think this is important because I think it's so instrumental in everything we do in life really is the forgiveness piece, learning to forgive yourself because yes. so much of what happens to us, we give power to whatever the circumstance is, the other person, the incident, whatever it is, right? Because yeah. we don't want to feel bad about ourselves or like you said, why, why am I deserving this? Right. Yeah. And you don't, you're absolutely right. You don't deserve it ever. You didn't right. deserve it, but right. there was something there you had to learn, right? There was something there and it's an unfortunate thing. 
I think when we get to that place, I know for me that when you get to that place of forgiveness, it's a really good thing because you learn to not only forgive the perpetrator or the other the other person involved, but you also learn to forgive yourself and you make peace with it. And that's when I think you have the most ability to create the most impact because you can see it from a different lens. Oh, gosh, absolutely. And, you know, people think... Um forgiveness is basically excusing someone's behavior. It's not. Forgiveness is actually relieving yourself of the burden of carrying guilt, mm. shame, anger, frustration. And that's what I tell my clients. I said, no one is saying you are excusing that what that person did to you, but why do you have to define yourself based on what they did to you? Letting that right. go forgiving them, forgiving yourself, getting rid of the shame and guilt. And why did I not see this? Why did I miss the red flags? All of these things that we torment ourselves with coming into a space in your life where you realize I didn't deserve it. I didn't go looking for it. <clears throat> it was something that happened to me <clears throat> and it may take me years to figure out why, but you will eventually come to terms with why I have clients that are now writing memoirs. I mean, they have gotten to that point where, and after mar being married for like 30 and 40 years, they're writing mm -hmm. their story. You know why? Because when you're with a narcissist, you don't have the opportunity to say your side. They don't listen to you. They're not held accountable. They're not responsible for anything that goes on. So you're silenced and you literally, what I call it is a character in their book. They plucked you out of your life because you had so much to offer them that they could not create for themselves. So they are like vampires. They literally suck that from you. And then you become a shell of the person that you were when you met them. And I tell people, it's time to take yourself out of that book. That is not your life anymore. Your life is here. Put yourself back into your own book and now rewrite your story. And that's where that wow. journey begins. Yeah, I love it. Well, you guys have certainly rewritten yours. And I, I like that you've been able to not stay victim to that and, and move into to another into the place where you need to be. You're calling, helping other people and thriving, as you mentioned early on about how that how commonly this is searched. I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because I really want to talk about you and your journey and you know what you guys have learned in this process. But I really would love to know because I feel like narcissism is one of those things that we use a lot in our, you know, in, in languaging, we'll say, oh, that's a narcissistic coworker, yeah. or that's a narcissistic spouse. And, and I think at times we all exhibit narcissistic sure. traits at different times, right? Absolutely. Because especially yeah. we're achievers and we, if we want to do things, there are times we are a little bit self-centered, but Absolutely. I think you probably know more than anybody, there are clear defined patterns of behavior with these people that are really, truly narcissistic people. And I don't know yes. if you want to maybe just share a few of those for maybe somebody listening, because there may be somebody working with someone like this or somebody that's currently, you know, they're involved with family members that are like this and they're having to deal with this. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, um, because of that very thing, we created a questionnaire. It's called, Are They a Narcissist? And it is Love a it. questionnaire that people can actually look at all 20 questions and actually rate them. You know, is it always like mm. this? Is it sometimes like this? Is it never like this? And it, and then calculate their score at the bottom because once they go through this check, check sheet, and I tell people, do not put yourself into any of these categories because I had people saying, well, if I hadn't done this, then they probably wouldn't have done. This is not about you. This is about the person you're concerned about. So this is all about questions relating to them. And if you're really honest with yourself and you go through all the questions and many of them are, do they ever apologize? Do they ever accept accountability? Do their words, are their words completely different than their actions? Uh, do they act differently at home toward you than in public? These things, mm -hmm. do they, um, do they, uh, uh, put you down in public, little jabs to tear away your self-esteem. Is it much worse at home? Because a narcissist, the control piece is what they thrive on. So taking yeah. away your confidence, your self-esteem, uh, the, the, what made you you is a way for them to make you feel insecure, um, 
worthless, basically, and that they're your they're your only hope. And so your sense of independence completely is evaporated. Um, and John and I started doing skits on our channels because it's easy for someone to say, well, that is a narcissistic trait or they're this. When you actually see it and we do reenactments of what actually happened to us, you can actually look at it and say, oh, my gosh, this is exactly what I'm living. And that's when things change. That's when we realize mm-hmm. our audience is now resonating with a visual look at it. People would, oh, that's my husband. That's my wife. That's my father. I can't believe this. And it, it just exploded. That's when everything went you know, from zero to 300,000 followers now. Um, and it made us realize sometimes that's what it takes for people to go, oh my gosh, it's not me. I'm not the problem. Yeah. I am living in a problem, but I did not create the problem. So, yeah. And I could see that because the, the longer you stay in that, the more that kind of keeps going. Oh, the, yeah. You've got the, con- the, you know, the lack of self-confidence brewing over here and the control. And yeah, it's a re- definitely a recipe for a disaster. So, well, I mean, I'm I excited about what you're doing. I kind of, I could do share what? that questionnaire. I can share the questionnaire with you and you can give it to your audience if you want to. Yes. So they can take yeah, absolutely. It. I'll yeah, do I would love I would love to just see it. I want to see yeah. it for myself. Just okay. <laughs> I yes. listen to this. I'm like, I want to look at that. But no, that would be great because anybody that's sitting in that position, yeah. you know, might like I said, it may be working with somebody, it may be a friend, it may yeah. be a spouse, it may be a you know, a family member, and they may be thinking, is that really what's going on? And they're kind of right. questioning, you know, themselves. So I'm mm-hmm. glad that you said you put that together. So yeah. oh yes. Um yeah. so I, I do want to switch gears. I want to talk a little about, you know, a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey, what you guys are doing. And thank you for sharing all that. I wanted to get that in there because I feel like that's an important part of what you guys are doing and what you embody. And and it's why you're doing so well, because it's clearly a topic that people are interested in learning about and knowing. Um, But I do want to talk about you. And I want to I want to talk a little bit about this journey, you know, going into this like into the social media space because Uh you and I, we're not like, you know, Uh Gen Z. (laughs) (laughs) where We just wake up. We're like, we know how to do social media, right? Like we're having to learn all this. And so I would really, I I just want to know from the business perspective on your side, like maybe some of the things you guys have had to kind of learn to work through. Is it the social media? There are other parts of this, but what have been some of the big things you guys have had to really work through to help build your brand and your following and, and, and what you're doing? Well, the social media was, um, when I say a tough journey, um, I broke a lot of equipment because I I just, I mean, I would just sling it across the room. And normally I don't have this rage temper, but my husband's like, you know, honey, I'm not sure if this is good for you, you know, to be doing uh, social media. (laughs) But it was so funny because in the corporate environment, I mean, I was an executive with a company. I had like a magic elf, I call them, in the back room. They made my computer turn on. They made, you know, if something went wrong, I just, hey, this is not working. And it just magically got fixed. Well, when we had to become the magic elves, we stunk. I mean, we absolutely did not know what we were doing. We didn't know. We we had such a small presence on social media. I mean, I think I had three followers and they were my family. And so going in front of a camera, when I go back and look at my original videos, I cringe. I mean, I'm like, oh my God, why didn't someone tell me that? I, I, I mean, it's, it was embarrassing, but then it also grounds you and makes you realize mm-hmm. what you're capable of, what you're capable of learning. So we did a lot of YouTube uh, videos. We did a lot of, how do you do this? What does this mean? Of course, I have a son who's a millennial and when all else fell, I'm like, can you just come over here? Can you just walk us through this? And so he, he would laugh, but he's, he's definitely been one of our biggest, biggest fans. But the social media, the technology, um, things like that. But social media is a way to get your word out. And, and when you think mm-hmm. about people, um, everyone's gone through something. And if you've gone through an extraordinary situation and you came out better on the other end, sharing your message is probably the best and most rewarding thing you can do because you're helping Mm -hmm. others in that same environment. Um, And you and people can do it. You just have to have the I guess the courage to just step a little bit off that cliff and not worry about falling. And if you do and if you fail, who cares? Just go back and correct it. Don't try not to make the same mistake again. But uh, it's been an interesting 18 months, you know, from 
you know, having somebody else handle all of it to 100% us. So we have definitely. Entrepreneurs, are you ready to level up your leadership skills? Tune in now for an exclusive offer designed just for you. This is my time. Did you know 63% of consumers prefer businesses aligned with their values? Recognizing your core values isn't just vital for business growth, it's the bedrock of effective leadership. Whether you're a seasoned entrepreneur or an aspiring creator, identifying your core values is a key step in constructing the framework of a successful leader, enabling you to lead authentically, expand your business, and live life on your terms. Are you ready to access tools to kickstart your leadership journey? Unlock a treasure trove of insights and get your free resources at www.linktree forward slash Jennifer Loading. Take that crucial first step toward realizing your leadership aspirations and elevate your leadership game today. I could see that. I Yeah, that was one of the things I was talking about yesterday on this strategy session was the, the social media aspect, because it's not a favorite part of mine. You know, it's not part yeah. of the it's not the most fun thing that I love being creative, but it takes me a while to really think about how I want to curate things. And I spend a lot yeah. of time thinking, whereas if I jump on a podcast, having these dialogues with, you know, you guys on the you, you amazing people on the other end. That is nothing for me. Like I can have a conversation with somebody all day long and could care less. It would just naturally flow. Right. right I right. get to that other part and it's like, it, it's, it's like a real thing I have to work on. And I, I think there's a lot of good in what you said in that leaving those old things up there, because I think it gives other people the courage to say, here's where you started. Here's where you are. And it also shows that you've also had the tenacity and the persistence and the grit to keep weathering through it and, and keep, you know, doing it because you're passionate about it. So yeah. I think it's good. And, and I wanted to say, I share that with you. I share those pains. I don't know exactly how you feel, but I share those pains <laughs> with you. Yeah. I yeah. probably on a number of times, I have three kids, millennial and down. I go all the way to Gen Z. I'm like somebody, my son's always telling Nobody me, can help mom, you need to do different things on TikTok. And I'm like, I hate TikTok. I just like yeah. looking for cats and dogs on TikTok. You want me to figure out how to navigate the videos? I put them on there, but like, I can't, I don't have the energy to try to figure out the algorithms and all of that, you know? That's so, true. It's that because they're all different. And so what yeah. you do on one, you can't do on another. That was a big right. lesson for us because we were just mm -hmm. post, post, post. This one would do great. And then crickets over here. And I'm like, I don't understand what, once you learn it, then it does become second nature. And, and it is yeah. interesting. They are all different. YouTube, Instagram, yeah. Facebook, TikTok, all of them. Um, so, but it has been, it's been a fun journey, but you're right. Going in front of the camera, if I just do it off the cuff, it's like, I don't, you know, I could be walking, I could be doing, I could be painting, it's whatever. But to actually get a message across, you know, fortunately, John was an actor. Uh, you know, oh, he was okay. in Hillbilly Elegy with, the JD I know. Story. I love that movie. I did not know that. Yes, he was. And man, I, I told him, I, even though it was a teeny tiny part, I said, that residual check's probably going to be good because the entire world's watching it right now. Yeah. But, I so still get to that. Yeah. Channel. It's a good thing. Yes, yeah, especially he now. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. But he'll be like, babe, you have a scowl on your face. Babe, this part of your hair sticking up. So at least he's looking at it as like a director. And, you know, and all I have to do is just sit there yeah. and say, okay, go. You know, so well, we, well, we learn something new every day, and today we learned that new. But I did love that movie. Actually, I, I didn't read the book. My sister, I think my sister, my sister read the book. I want to say I watched the movie, good. and I enjoyed the movie. So I'm sure the book was great too. Oh yeah, so that's awesome, though. Yeah, no, and I'm with you on that. It's great. Sometimes it's all it's, it's nice when you have somebody that can pick up on those, you know, those details that maybe you or I probably wouldn't worry about as much because oh, we yeah. wouldn't know to look for that, you know. Yeah, that's he doesn't good. let me get behind the camera, especially when it's on him. He's like, <laughs> so, he goes, my shirt up. was wrinkled, my collar's up, Melissa. You didn't see that? I went. I was so engrossed with what you were saying. He goes, Oh my gosh. He goes, That's it. You're done. No longer. No longer behind the camera. That's his job. It yeah, is. That's his job. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to ask you kind of, I guess, more on the personal side, because obviously having gone through this, you, you guys are probably, I'm imagining a big on personal development. You would have had to been oh, yeah. to have gone from there to here. There's no way I, because you, you do, you evolve and that's personal development. So I would love to know, you know, just how do you guys, or maybe you personally make a priority or what you do to make time for yourself 
in the midst of running this, you know, you guys are doing really well with this business, but just making sure that you create time for yourself. And you, and you can get so absorbed in, um, in a path that you, you lose sight of it, especially when you, when you go, when we went through the abusive relationship, you lose everything about yourself. I mean, I, I was into fitness. I love to paint. Um, it just becomes so impossible to think about yourself when you're in that type of relationship because Mm -hmm. they take everything, all your energy, everything is about them. And so you become less and less a factor in that uh, relationship and in your own life. So when it was all said and done, um, I vowed that I would never, ever give myself to something or someone where my true self, my true inner spirit, my passions, everything I had was snuffed out. So I, I started mm-hmm. painting again. I mean, I, that's part of my passion and uh, I love to paint. I can get lost in my painting studio. In fact, my husband had no idea I knew how to paint. When I first showed him a painting, uh, he asked me if it was paint by numbers. And I went, no, I did this myself. And he's like, I didn't know you knew how to paint. And we had been together for years. But it, it, when you pick up things that you loved before, or maybe something you wanted to do, you know, maybe it was a passion. If you were in a a, a healthy relationship, that person would have encouraged you, not in a narcissistic relationship. It takes away from them. So I always encourage people to look inside what made you happy, what makes you smile when you think about it. What is it that brings a smile to your face? Because that is where your inner passion starts coming back. And you do have to make time for it. I mean, we were back in the gym. I mean, John's a workout fanatic. I'm, you know, I'm a consistent person that works out. I don't go all crazy in the gym or anything, but we eat healthy. Um, Like I said, we love to read. We love to travel. So you do have to mix those things into your life. Otherwise it becomes mundane and monotonous and you lose your spirit, you know? And so keeping that fire alive keeps your spirit alive. And so it digging down deep and finding it and rediscovering it is part of our recovery program. Actually, it's rediscovering yeah. your passion as part of the, you know, when you're out of the relationship and you're stuck and you want to move forward, um, those type of exercises really come into play because it retrains your brain to think outside of living in your past. Mm-hmm. So. And yeah, and that's a good point on all of that, because I I talk about that, too. I always talk about flow, which is the same thing, really. It's finding that thing that lights you up. Right. And but it's so much more than even that, because, you know, you think about it in terms of like creativity with your work, like Mm -hmm. idea generating, you know, like it's it's a conversation that I get in with people a lot. Like they'll say, I don't have time to do these things that I enjoy doing. And I'm like, but you really don't have time not to because it's right. really stunting your ability to be creative and work mm-hmm. effectively. Because when you get lost in those moments of I, I, I don't know what you want to coin the term, it's like bliss, like you lose track of time. You're really yep. doing something that you enjoy and you're passionate. It, Like you said, it pulls this fire back into you and it allows you to show up differently in the other facets of your life. So you Absolutely. are happier you know, when you show up for your relationships or when you go to work or, you know, or you just you come in a different kind of happiness, I think. I agree. I, I, I totally agree. And and people um, need to know they're worth it. It's not being selfish. Yeah. It's actually, like you said, it's creating a better version of yourself. So you are more creative. You are more engaged. You are a better listener. You're a better speaker. Um you actually can absorb things better because your brain is not so uh, preoccupied with things that maybe don't even matter. And they're just holding you back. Um, So, you know, I I call it a cleansing, you know, uh, area where it is time to think about yourself. You you can't just always think about others. It's great to think about others. It's great to help others. But when you ignore yourself, you limit what you can do for yourself and others. So. I agree with that. Right, right. Well, one other question I want to ask you real quick, Melissa. I want to know, you said so many great things in this. I know we could talk forever, um, but I would love to know what you love about this. What is this like at the heart for you? Well, when, um, it, especially my one-on-one coaching, I mean, I have cried with my clients. I have celebrated with them. I have just watching them go from when I first meet them after several sessions and then what 
how we, once we get over hurdles, because people always think, um, I, I, I can't do that. That's just too far. But the problem is, is they're trying to jump over all the hurdles instead of just tackling them one part at a time. But when I see their face, when I first meet them, you know, they look terrified. Uh, their color, the, their hair, everything about them looks stressed out, to be honest with you. And seeing them go from that to smiling again, to actually getting their hair cut or colored, it makes them feel good. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you, you look awesome. You know, you actually took time for yourself and you went and did that. And it's getting the courage back. It's getting the courage to actually get back into their life and start living. But watching that transformation, John and I talk about this at dinner. I'm like, oh my God, guess what? And I'll tell him, you know, because he he has a lot of male clients. I do have some male clients, but I'm like, so-and-so did this and now they're this um, or getting out of it. And now they are battling. They're standing up for themselves in court. And then even on the other side, once they're out and said, okay, now I'm ready. I'm ready to get back into working out. I want to write a book. I, I, I could talk about that all day because it makes me choke up. I mean, I, the transformation and the, the hope after the first conversation I have with people, they're like, this is the first time I've had hope because they, I know they know I feel what they feel. I know exactly every word that comes out of their mouth. I know what it means. It's not like, mm, that's just bad for you. I know I can feel it. Sometimes it, it keeps me up at night, but watching their transformation go from that to where they can be and where they are. Oh, it, it's, it makes it worth it. It really, really does. I mean, I have clients in Australia. I have to meet with them on a different day. Like I meet with them. It's my Monday night. It's know, they're way ahead. <laughs> yes. So it's yeah. weird. We're on two different days, but it's, they're like, no yeah. one can help us there. So it's, it's a mm -hmm. way to actually work with people um, because you can't, you can get out of it. You can recover and you can actually get your fire back. And it's, it's great watching it happen. So, yeah. Yeah. I have. And I just thought there's one more thing I want to ask you because you, you've said so many great things and this is more on the, I want to finish up with this before I have you tell us where to find you, but I want to know, any advice and this is on the business side because you guys are in sort of a in the influencer space right like in yes. on the media and social media all of those things but i would love to know what your advice would be maybe for somebody maybe they have a creative passion it maybe it's a story maybe it's something they want to bring to the surface any advice that you would lend them for starting out in the beginning as an entrepreneur taking that idea to fruition well and um what I tell people, and of course I'm, you know, an avid journaler. I just love it, but it lets me get things out of my body that mm -hmm. I might not think about saying. So what I tell people is just think about what you're passionate about. And I do have some people that say, I don't know what I'm passionate about. You have to mm -hmm. actually sit and think about it and close your eyes. Right. What brings you happiness? What brings you smile? What obstacle did you overcome that you're really proud of yourself because you did it? That right there is the start of a business. I mean, when you think about yourself and where you were, what you overcame, how you did it, writing it down, just getting it on paper, that can become a business. You can become a coach like that. You can actually become a storyteller. You can become an influencer. You know, you I, there's influencers that have lost weight. The things that they're doing now are unbelievable. And they started with just telling their story, just their their journey and getting comfortable in front of a camera might take some time. You can practice it. You might never be comfortable with it, but I always tell people, write your ideas down, you know, write down things that, um, like I said, make you smile, make you happy, make you who you are. And maybe it's something that you had to reach deep inside to get you out of where you were to where you are now, but being able to share that, um, and you can share anything on social media and finding the right platform. If you overcame um, like a public speaking, I mean, people have real fears of that. You know, I used to right. public speak a lot. It, I would speak in front of thousands of people. I still was terrified when I did it. LinkedIn may be your place because there are so many people that have that same problem. So that's what people have to think about. If you overcame something in your life, there are so many people that are in that same boat right now and don't know how to do it. So being able to express that, 
you will find people that go, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I need help with. And just writing it down gets the ideas here out on paper. And then you can start planning and figuring out where you need to go. Where is your target audience? Um, and Google, I mean, you could search anything on Google to find your target audience under the topic that you feel that you conquered. That right there will give you a place to start. And that's exactly what I did. That's how I did it right yeah. there. I love it. Great advice. All good. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, overall, I think sometimes it's just actually sitting down and writing things down, yes. right? Like it's just taking the time to get things down. I, I like to keep like, you know, like a notebook around or, or, you know, just because sometimes I'll get like, I always get on my ideas in the morning early because I get up really early and I'll get them like when I'm walking the dog or kind of when I'm sitting at, you know, drinking my tea and eating sure. my breakfast. And so I like to write things down right in mm -hmm. that moment. So, because I forget it. And then oh. I will be like, what was that idea that I came up with, you know, earlier today? And uh, so, yeah, if I get it down and it may not be anything that I end up using for anything, but so, and sometimes it comes, I use it later for something else, but at least I've documented it you know, as a thought. And I think that's the thing, you know, even with what you're talking about with ideas, I think you just have to get good at doing that journaling. Yeah. And I, I recommend that to anyone. I do it. I, I, yeah. I'll get up in the middle of the night and write a sticky note. Oh my gosh. Cause I know, yeah. did I drink that? What did I say about that? It seemed really good. That was such a great I idea in the middle of the night. Now, what is it? So right. I write it down. I do. I have it right there by my bedside. John's like, Oh God, she's sure. writing stuff down. But I do exactly that. I write it down. So Good for you. Well, this has been great, Melissa. You've shared a lot of really good things. I'm excited about what you guys are doing. I think it's amazing. I'm glad that you've been able to, you know, take this and use it. Like I said, put it in a positive place and people are responding to it. I think it's an important topic. So I'm sure somebody listening to this is going to be like, you know, where do we find these people at? You know, where, where do we find them at? So maybe share with us a little bit how they can, you know, website all the good things where they can reach you guys and find you. Well, on our website, they can find anything and it's um, www.thev2w.com and it's spelled V the number two W.com or they could just Google victim to warrior and they will find us. Our website has all of our resources, pre-recorded webinars, the financial abuse series that they can take, uh, booking a call with us if they want that, um, you know, getting our ebook, everything that we offer is on our website, um, along with our social media channels. And all of those have our, you know, what people refer to as our link tree, which has our individual um, links that they can find different things, especially the Are They a Narcissist quiz. That right there. But I'm going to make sure you get a copy of that. Yeah. Um, Make sure because we get it. We'll get it. We'll, we can attach it when we send the file out. We'll, yeah, we'll get it in there. Find it. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's how you find us. Awesome. Well, good. This has been awesome, Melissa. I thank, thank you. you. I mean, you're wonderful. Like I said, I love what you guys are doing. Thanks for your time. I, I know this is going to be a an awesome episode. People will get some good tips out of here and, and on both fronts. We're on the narcissistic side, but we also talked about the journey as the entrepreneur too. So I, I love it. That's what's cool about Starter Girls is we get to kind of talk about the things that are important, but also talk about the journey of the dreamers and, and the achievers. So Absolutely. thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, Jennifer. Absolutely. All right. And of course, to our audience, we want to say thank you for tuning in to Starter Girls podcast. It's where we empower women, celebrate the dreamers. We hope you found the, the this episode inspiring and informative. And of course, if you enjoy the show, go hit the subscribe, rate, review on your favorite podcast platform. That allows us to keep, continue to bring content to you. And as I always say, in order to live the extraordinary, you must start. Every start begins with a decision. You guys take care, be safe, be kind to one another, and we will see you next time.